Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like every video um, I say that, but I want to get straight into it and talk to you guys about the three things that I feel like I did to help me land a role or my first role um, in tech. So let's get started. So the first thing um, that I highly encourage you guys to do is do not be afraid to apply. I have a lot of classmates and kind of like friends that I've met along the way in my tech journey who um, they're afraid to apply. They feel like they're not ready, you know, they're not ready to apply. They're not, they don't feel like they have enough projects or enough like meaningful projects or they, there's things they still need to learn and blah, 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 right? Apply. Even if you feel like you're not ready, just apply. You know, I kind of talked about this in my previous um, videos, but I've talked about the, the whole thing about, you know, when I applied, I'm still to this day, I started really like heavily, I would say heavily and consistently applying with my job tracker. Um, I started heavily doing that in April. Till this day in what, August, I'm still getting either, hey, can we bring you in for an interview? Or, you know, we're moving forward with other candidates email. Still, you know, I've since secured a job, a role, um, but I've yet to start, but I'm still getting those emails. That was what May, June, July, August, about roughly four months that I, ago I applied and I haven't really been applying since then that I'm still getting, um, notifications for either coming in to interview or to, you know, we're moving forward with a different candidate type of email for almost four months later. So I say, when you feel like you're like 50% there, go ahead and just apply, get your resume together. Like I talked about, start your LinkedIn, but definitely just apply. It doesn't hurt. You know, like everybody says, don't just don't apply to the jobs you really want to work for. Like the ones that you're just like, Oh my God, like I want to work at Google. I've always wanted to work at Google. Not saying don't apply, but at the beginning of your journey, I think this is like a very common thing that a lot of people know. Like, don't apply to your dream job first, you know, apply to like companies that you're kind of interested in, but if you don't get the job, you're not going to cry. And with that being said, another thing I highly recommend is just apply broadly period, you know, have an idea of what you want to do, but do not be so like, don't pigeonhole yourself. If you're on a short time frame or you want to get a job, very quickly, I would say do not pigeonhole yourself. And what I mean is, yes, you want to work for a company that you love. But if I'm being honest, I think my approach worked for myself, which is I just I just like breezed through the requirements and I quickly read through it. A fun fact and a tip they teach us in boot camp is if it's three years and under, you can apply. So even if they say three years of experience, blah, 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 that's still technically for a junior um, or an ent entry level or a junior software engineer, or software developer. So keep that in mind. Three years and under means you can apply. So I would just breeze through, make sure I kind of understood, at least if I understood the, requ the job requirements. Um, and even if it said it was, it needed a college degree, I do have a college degree, but if even if some of them would say like bachelor of computer science, right? I don't have that. I still applied. I just applied. I looked at, I would go on LinkedIn. You can put up alerts to send you jobs every day. That's what I had set up in LinkedIn. And, um, if you email me, I can, I can give you the steps on how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, but I just applied. I didn't really care where I was going to work. I just knew I wanted to work somewhere. And I feel like that approach, it's not for everybody, but it definitely helped me because I wasn't, I wasn't getting my hopes up about a position and a job just for them to either reject me or me to not pass the interview, you know? So I would just broadly apply. I would use my job tracker, um, an application tracker list and just put it on there. I would link it. I would link, um, if you go look at it, you'll see that I have a place for the URL so I could link the job description. Sometimes I take them down. So you may also want to put it in a separate Word doc file or just keep an idea of what, so that when this recruiter calls you in three months, you're like, what job is it? You can quickly go and click. But it wasn't until I got that initial call from the recruiter that I actually went back and really read the requirements and decided if I really wanted to do the interview or not. Um, and I just think that helped me not keep my hopes up about a job. Like some of these jobs sound amazing. You really want to work for them and I get it. But if you, I was on a time, uh, like a, I had a short time frame that I was like, I need to get a job by this day, you know? So for me, it was just like, get in there, get the job, get, do the interview, secure the interview, secure the job, you know? 
So if you don't, if you have time to spare, you know, then I would only say, I would go ahead and say like, you know, only apply to companies, read all the job descriptions and only apply to companies that you genuinely like really, really, really want to work for. But that wasn't the case for me. So I just applied. Once I got that initial contact, I would then go back to my job tracker and check that URL to the job description. Or if I had copied and pasted it into another Word document, I would then read the requirements and, and see if this is something I was even interested in doing. I knew I didn't want to be in like a fast paced environment. So I avoided anything like that. If it said that I wasn't having it. So that's one thing that I would just say is apply, apply, apply. Do not be afraid to apply. Even if you think you're not ready, none of these um recruiters or anybody none of them i mean maybe one of them looked at my github i don't even have a portfolio and i'm not saying don't make it a portfolio but don't wait until your portfolio is like aha uh -huh. it's a work in progress and they understand that but at least get one solid project and then go your front end developer obviously they're going to be looking at um all your stuff like you know like looking at your project seeing how it looks because as a front end developer that's what you're going to be doing uh, but you don't have to have everything perfect before you start applying. Go ahead and start applying, you know, and mix it up between like applying and studying and working on projects. Like that is like the number one, one of the number one things that I would say, I feel like helped me um, secure a role. Number two, and I actually got this from the black female engineer. I think that's her name, black female engineer or black female software engineer. I will link her YouTube channel in the description. I got this and I thought this was very invaluable for me. Um, and that is to get one of your friends or somebody if you have a niece a nephew a sibling somebody that's in college preferably a public university and i would only say public because they have a big job network um but if the private school they go to also has a big one i would encourage this too but most of these schools for instance i went to georgia state university at Georgia State, they had this huge college board where recruiters and people like that would come in and would, um, you know, look for students that were about to graduate or students that were there, but, you know, they were looking for internships, things like that. So think about that. These are people that are looking for entry level people because these people are graduating from college. They probably don't have a lot of work experience up outside of internships in their field. So these companies and roles are looking for these certain type of people. As you're self-studying, you are probably going to be qualified for a lot of these entry level roles, right? So when you have a friend or a niece or nephew or whoever who has access to that, you can either go like ask them for their username and like login info or ask to sit with them and just go through the list, type in software engineer and or web developer and see what roles come up and at what companies. Some of these companies make you apply directly um, through the through that website. But a lot of these companies, you know, they'll have a they may not have a link to the website, but they'll have the job description, they'll have the name of the job, and they'll have obviously the company name. So what can you then do? Go Google that company, pull up that job because clearly it's open, and apply through their company. So when she dropped that gem and I saw that, I was like. Oh, okay like that's actually a really good idea you know and I ended up landing a lot of interviews at the very beginning from that experience so I would highly recommend for you to go ahead and try and see if you have like a friend or um, a resource or anything like that a friend or resource a nephew a niece anybody that is in college, enrolled in college in the moment and can get you into that network highly 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 recommend it's all a game at the end of the day so tip number three if you don't take anything from me please study for these technical interviews data structures and algorithms data structures and algorithms say it with me it does not matter how nice your portfolio looks if you cannot pass the coding interview. I've said this in so many videos. I've talked about my experience with the boot camp and how I feel like they didn't really prepare us that well for this portion. But they, like I said, there were so many missed opportunities because I was not ready for the technical interview portion. And when I say technical interview, it's a coding challenge. So typically they'll either one or two or maybe three things. They'll either give you a take home assignment and say, hey, build this and you have to do it by this date. Not necessarily a problem. If you've been studying on your own, you could probably figure it out or have, have somebody help you figure it out. 
what I'm talking about is the coding, they call it the coding challenge or technical interview portion. And that is typically when you're coding with somebody at the company in front of them, right? So they'll give you like a solve for this using a da 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 da, or solve for an array doing this, or solve for, uh, I don't know, an object doing this, or, you know, take all the letters and put them backwards, something like that, right? That in theory, right? If you have a basic knowledge, for instance, obviously I, I know JavaScript, so I code in JavaScript. In theory, it's simple, right? But there's so many things that you don't realize you have to think about, like space, memory, time, things like that, where your way of learning it, probably through your tutorials or through like other various methods of just beginner basic co-academy free code camp learning it is not the most efficient way to do it and what they're looking for is if you understand for instance big O notation right if you understand things like that then you'll know that your way of solving it through free code camp or what they may have taught you is probably not the most efficient way to solve this problem and it's up to you to show them that you know big old notation you know about hash tables and other things like that in order to solve the problem i will link or put an i or something like that to the video where i talk about the uh, programming book that I feel like really helped me as well as I'll link below the Udemy course that I feel like really gave me like really put things together for me. If you cannot pass that technical interview, like I said, it does not matter what your projects look like. You will not get the job. And that, you know, if you check LinkedIn, Twitter, maybe even Instagram, you'll see a lot of people complaining about that portion of the job. Now we talked about in the Coding Chicas, we've spoken to some, um, my sorority sister, Rocio, who is, you know, very hopeful that certain, certain that will kind of change because it seems like the technical interview from what we've been gathering, the technical interview is a lot harder than the actual job, right? So hopefully that part, part of the process will eventually change, but for now you have to, Play the game so if you take nothing from this video technical interview prep if you take nothing technical interview prep and what i say is coding challenges they do not give you you don't get to google okay so just like we google everything you're not googling you're not allowed to one valuable tip i learned from somebody that came to talk to us in the boot camp was Work, uh, practice it on paper, solve it on paper. If you can solve it on paper, you can solve it on a computer with no Google. And how do you solve it? You either use hacker rank, you use leak code. Obviously you're not gonna get everything right, but as you go along, you'll not only start to see it, that it's becoming easier, but you'll start to see patterns as you get more exposed to these, um, more exposed to these, uh, these data structures and algorithms, you'll start to see patterns. A lot of people will say they've gone into an interview and they'll, they've will they seen the question before. There's only so many questions that you'll be able to, like there's only so many questions and so many ways they can ask you the same thing. So if you're at the point where you can solve medium problems, like you should be able to solve the, there's easy, medium, hard. Once you hit medium, you should be feeling pretty confident. And some questions will take you an hour, some will take you a day, some will take you three days. Don't think it's cheating because you're looking at the answer that answer is going to help you but then you need to at a later point in time go back and try and solve that on your own to make sure that it's solidified in your brain for sure so that's all for me um like i said if anything take the technical interview portion seriously please 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 take that part seriously and i'm sure in due time you'll land the role of your dreams so that's it for me. Uh, my next video is actually a giveaway announcement. So I will be giving away something to some subscribers who I feel like, you know, I appreciate you guys following me and subscribing to me and asking me questions. And I just wanted to have a way to like give you guys some money back. So, or not money, but you know, something. Okay. So that'll be my next video. You know, I hope everything's great with you and I hope everything's going well and, you know, continue to, to work hard and understand you're not doing this alone. Like I said, my my DMs, my emails are always free, so are free and open. So please, you know, do not hesitate to reach out to me. And with that being said, have a great rest of your day.